mother Tell your children not to walk my way Tell your children not to hear my words What they mean, what Hello, they say Muslims, And welcome to this, as the title said This is a review of TNA's final resol revolution Resolution, resolution, right? Yes, resolution The first pay-per-view of 2008 after I just ripped them on their pay-per-views of last year, so let's see how they did with the very first one of this year. So it's definitely pay-per-view of the year as we speak. Anyways, here we go. We started off the show with the Rockin' Rave Infection. I hate that name. That's like, a, that's a horrible name. Versus LAX. Okay, this was pretty good at what you would expect between you know, you got Lance Hoyt, Jimmy Rave, Homicide, and Hernandez. They did a pretty good job. Um, you know, pretty much just a really good, you know, I, I would say something we probably would see on Impact, but it was still a pretty good opener. Uh, the story behind this, of course, was that we had the Latino, the LAX member, um, who was continually attacking Miss... <clears throat> Hemi, so that was the backdrop of this. Pretty good match, lots of spots, pretty good opener. Um, at the end, uh, the mysterious LAX member came out, tried to attack uh, Hemi, Hoyt attacked her, then uh, she, LAX member, low blow, low blowed Hoyt, and then Hemi tried to low blow the LAX member, which, to no one's surprise, they, uh, you know, nothing happened. Comes to find out, it was Shelly Martinez, who we all knew. Thumbs up for me. And she, then the beatdown commenced. It was pretty fun. Uh, not, you know, pretty good stuff. I liked it, of course, since it did have Shelly Martinez in it. Um, can't really complain about anything about this. I, I'd give the whole segment about three stars. And I will say this, Miss Martinez was over right away, even before she did her little strip tease, which she did do, which was very nice as well, and a highlight of the pay-per-view, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Uh, then we got the first of many that was Lance, which was Storm, and Young doing a drinking contest to determine who would choose the stipulation for their match at the next pay-per-view. Why this wasn't on Impact... I have no idea This where this belonged. It wasn't bad, but definitely didn't need to be on a pay-per-view. It was just kind of there. It was just... I, none of it was really funny. It was, it was cute in some parts. Cute funny, but none of it was really funny. Um, and Borash needs to stay out. Stay out of these freaking segments because he really doesn't add anything to them. He takes away if there's... You know, to be honest. Anyways... Uh, next we had Kaz versus Black Rain. This was, without a doubt, in my opinion, the best match Black Rain has been in since he has been in TNA. This was, this wasn't good, but it was okay. I would give this two and a half stars, um, basically because of Kaz. Kaz went out there, did a lot of good stuff. Um, Dustin didn't do too bad. He, he didn't look like he was walking through stuff. Uh, the the ending though did come out of nowhere. This match probably would have even been better if the ma if the ending hadn't come out of nowhere. But a good, I, I would say, two and a half star match. So there we go. Um, <clears throat> then we had the No DQ TNA talk Knockout Title Match: Gil Kim versus Awesome Kong. Was this good? Wow, this was awesome. This was just oh, this was so great. This was probably one of the best women's matches I have seen in a long, long long time. I could not do this justice. They just went out there and kicked the living crap out of each other. The ending was great where Kong kept getting upset with the referees. No DQ, so she kept power bombing the referees because she felt like it was a slow count. And then the second time she par tried to power bomb the second referee, Gail Kim rolled her up with the referee falling on to <coughs> Kong. It was it was very well booked. It sounds like it was overbooked, but it really wasn't. They booked it pretty well perfectly for what they were doing. It kept everyone pretty strong, kept the feud going. It was very, very good in my opinion. I would give this three and three-quarter stars. Just awesome stuff, really. is really, really good stuff. Then we had Abyss versus Judas Messinas. Um, the first time they've actually fought 
this wasn't bad. This is about, you know, what you kind of expect. I give this two and one quarter stars. Um, kind of slow in parts. The, the crowd was definitely kind of out of it because of the women's match, which the crowd was pretty intense for. Um, you know, it was just kind of just the starting off of this feud, to be honest, and uh, did its job for that, but two and a half stars, so nothing bad. Then we had Robert Roode versus Miss Brooks. Or Robert Roode, Miss Brooks, Booker T versus Chamel. Chamel. This was not good. I didn't lie. I, mean, I shouldn't say this wasn't good. As far as the match, this was okay. I'd give this two and a half stars because Rude and Booker T were in there together. Uh, Booker T and Rude actually worked pretty well together. This was actually a Rude match that I actually kind of enjoyed, um, which I usually don't enjoy his matches. They kept teasing that Miss Brooks wouldn't help uh, Rude. Then in the middle of the match, she finally started helping him because she had to help him. Uh, finally, she kind of cost him the match. He was getting ready to, you know, beat her up. So Shermel walked in. He accidentally hit Shermel, and they played it up, and it really, they played it up like he had really, really hurt her. But it was more of like he just elbowed her. We've seen women take worse bumps than that, so it can, it kind of came off kind of unbelievable, particularly how they were overreacting to it, in my opinion. But overall, I, I would give the whole thing, even though I thought the match was two and a half stars, I, I would give the overall, I would just give the whole segment two stars. It wasn't, eh. It wasn't so great, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> then we got the Ultimate X match. Uh, you know, the Motor City Machine Guns and Black Machismo versus Team 3D and Johnny Divine. <coughs> this was was actually kind of... This was enjoyable. I wouldn't call it... It was good, but it was good because Team 3D kind of did a lot of comedy spots, given the fact that, you know, they weren't really going to go up and get on the uh, ropes for the Ultimate X match, so, you know, it, that was good. We had a lot of good spots as well. There was there was some really just wow stuff, and some stuff that was wow because it shouldn't have been wow, but um, some, I, I wouldn't say flubs, but guys just landing wrong. Um, I give this two and three quarter stars. I, I, I thought it was fun, but just not, you know, not what you would expect from an Ultimate X match. And uh, the end was not very good at all. In my opinion, uh, Team 3D went over, and the ending just kind of came out of nowhere, and it was, you know, and there was also a, a you know, a, a no sell of a table, the table no selled, um, a table spot, which is never good. So there we go. Then we had AJ Styles and Tom Cover, Samoa Joe and Kevin Nash. This was good because Samoa Joe was in for most of the match, but you know, again, this was not booked very well. You know, it, it got to the point where you know Kevin Nash did turn on Samoa Joe. And even after that, it looked like I thought they were going to pull out where Joe was going to win the titles, and then they were basically going to have this, you know, where Kevin Nash was going to have to feud with Samoa Joe while they were title holders. Would have been kind of interesting, even though that's pretty TNA standard. Um, but the match itself was pretty good, uh, I would say. I, I would give it three stars. I enjoyed it. And then we had the main event, Kurt Angle versus Christian Cage. This, wrestling-wise, was pretty good. Um, they did a lot of re counter holds, counter holds, counter holds. It was kind of slow in spots, but not too slow. Um, this was a pretty long match. It was almost 20 minutes. So, um, it did not. It, I will say this: it did, I just didn't get that big match feel. But I think it was just because of everything leading up to this. They they had been all night, and oh, who was AJ Styles going to side with? Was it going to be Kurt Angle or was it going to be Christian Cage? And the whole Kurt. Karen Angle thing, and so there was all of that going on, which kind of led to what the ending was. But um, overall, the match was the match wasn't wasn't really bad. The booking though, with AJ basically costing Christian the title, was wasn't done very well because uh, Karen got involved too much in the match. It got it got she got so involved that it started taking away from the match, and that's never good. So I, I would this could have been a really good, really great match, but because of that. I'd only give it uh, three and three quarter stars. Um, overall, a pretty good start for the for the year. I would give the pay per view a seven point five overall, um, which isn't a bad start for TNA because they had a lot of pay per views last year, which I wouldn't even get close to that. So a very good start for TNA. Hopefully, this is a good start. They can build upon this. This was a pay per view that on paper did not look that good at all, and I would say that they definitely, um, you know stepped it up from that angle and was actually better than I thought it was going to be. So, 7.5, I'm out.
this ride. <laughs>